Hello friends, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video which can help you in clearing your various exams, okay, as far as the current affairs are concerned. So let's begin this video. I hope all of you are aware of the live courses for RBI SEBI and NABARD and our mobile application. Now guys, before starting with the questions, let me inform you that the, the below mentioned, the phone number, the email ID and our website, these are the channels through which you can uh, access us, you can reach out to us. If you have any type of guidance or any type of counseling, ki hai. counseling in the sense related to the course or related to your career, okay? So you can contact us, we are ready to help you. Okay, so on that note, let's begin our journey of the current affairs for today. The very first question that we have is, how many tele-mental health centers of excellence will be established under the tele-mental health assistance and networking across states initiative? So there is tele-manas initiative. Okay, so guys, 23 center of excellences will be established under the tele-manas initiative, which in itself is the very novel initiative. So manas initiative was already there, which was launched during the COVID time in order to provide counseling for the mental health. Okay, to maintain the mental health of the people, free counseling was provided to the people because we all know that COVID ke time pe we were already in quarantine, uh, many were in quarantine and uh, all of us were logged inside our homes only because of the lockdown. So that period had a very, very drastic impact on many people's life because some of them have unfortunately lost their parents. And if any one of you has lost anyone during the COVID time, so you would understand the impact of that uh, event okay so in order to help the people tackle with the mental problems arising out of it and otherwise also manas initiative was launched and now the tele manas has been launched so it is basically the tele version now you can call the, uh, to the counselors and seek the guidance okay on that note guys let me tell you that on october 10 world mental health day is observed and we are going to talk about that also in the later part of the video but as for your information right now we are talking about the mental health initiative so we all need to know that october 10 is the world mental health day and on that note there is a little advice from my side guys being your mentor and being uh, you can say from the same generation i understand the complexities or the issues that all of us face in our day-to-day -day lives but at the same time, it is also important for all of us to know ourselves to keep our mental health in check and balances, okay? Because mental health is the most important part, okay? Health is wealth. We all have, all have heard that. But now I'm going to tweak that because mental health is also your wealth. It's the biggest wealth in today's times and the mobile and the excessive use of electronic gadgets are nowadays just... Uh, ruining our mental health and various other you can say impacts are already there on our bodies okay so try to limit your use of the electronic gadgets and take your mental health seriously if you are feeling any kind of anxiety or depression related to the exam specifically then you need not to feel about it just need to prepare you just need to prepare start preparation once you do the preparation you bring consistency in you you will feel that the anxiety and uh, stress in you is going out so that is all from my side. Now let's begin with the news itself. So abhi humne baat ki that Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has launched the Tele Mental Health Assistance and Networking Across States Initiative. Okay. So not only pro, uh, this initiative aims to provide the mental health counseling through the telephone and through the uh, remote modes, but it will also establish various centers so that we can provide the mental health counseling very effectively to the grassroots level okay and specifically this initiative aims to tackle the rural and unreached areas the remote areas okay so that is the focus of this initiative moving ahead the government of india has already announced the national tele mental health program in the union budget of 2022 to 2023 so this year's budget only had this initiative but remember ki abhi tak is program ke upar koi bhi detailed document available nahi hai so the government has not released the framework of this program as and when the government will release it i am going to provide it in the video itself okay 
Now, what is the purpose of telemanas? So, I have already told you, telemanas aims to provide free tele mental health services all over the country, down the clock, particularly catering to people in remote or underserved areas. Because in the remote areas, in the underserved areas, we all know that there is the darkness of ignorance. Okay. बहुत सारे लोगों को लगता है कि अगर आप साइकाइट्रिस्ट की हेल्प ले रहे हैं इवन इन अर्बन एरियाज आल्सो अगर आप साइकाइट्रिस्ट की हेल्प ले रहे हैं या इस तरीके की कोई चीजें आप एक्सेस कर रहे हैं देन यू आर प्रोबेबली सफरिंग फ्रॉम अ मेंटल डिजीज प्रोबेबली यू आर अ मेंटल आई मीन दिस इज द स्टिग्मा दैट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द मेंटल डिजीज एंड इन ऑर्डर टू रिमूव दैट दीज सर्विसेज आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन द रूरल एंड रिमोट एरियाज ओके नाउ मूविंग अहेड अंडर द प्रोग्राम 23 थ्री टेली मेंटल हेल्थ सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंसेज विल बी स्टैब्लिश विद निम्हांस दैट इज नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेंटल हेल्थ एंड न्यूरो साइंसेज विच इज लोकेटेड इन बैंगलोर ओके सो निम्हांस इज गोइंग टू बी द नोडल सेंटर एंड इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रिपल आई टी सो इन बैंगलोर इट इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड द टेक्नोलॉजी सपोर्ट टू दीज सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंसेज सो दैट दे कैन प्रोवाइड द सर्विसेज रिमोटली एज वेल ट्रिपल आई टी बैंगलोर ओके नॉट ट्रिपल आई टी इट्स द आई आई टी इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी बैंगलोर एंड द नेशनल हेल्थ सिस्टम रिसोर्स सेंटर दीज टू इंस्टीट्यूशन आर गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड द टेक्निकल सपोर्ट सो द इनिशियटिव इज सीकिंग द टेक्निकल सपोर्ट फ्रॉम थ्री इंस्टीट्यूशन ओके ट्रिपल आई टी बैंगलोर आई आई टी बैंगलोर एंड नेशनल हेल्थ सिस्टम रिसोर्स सेंटर सो द गवर्नमेंट एम्स टू ओपन एटलीस्ट वन टेलीमनस सेल इन ईच स्टेट एंड यूनियन टेरिटरी ओके एंड अंडर दैट sell many different branches will operate okay a toll free 24/7 helpline is there which is this and this question can be uh, can be asked in the examination directly ye number bhi pucha ja sakta hai aapse because in the past in various examinations i have seen this that directly the number of consumer grievances or the grievances uh, you can say uh, helplines आर आज इन दी एग्जामिनेशन तो उसके लिए आपको प्रिपेयर होना बहुत जरूरी है सो ट्राई टू रिमेंबर दिस नंबर इफ इन केस यू एनकाउंटर दिस क्वेश्चन देन यू शुड बी एबल टू आंसर इट ओके नाउ कमिंग बैक टू दिस स्टेटमेंट सो दिस इज द टोल फ्री नंबर विच विल हेल्प द पीपल टू सिलेक्ट देअर लैंग्वेज ओके विच एवर लैंग्वेज दे आर कंफर्टेबल इन एंड देन द सर्विस इज ऑल्सो एक्सेसिबल एट दिस नंबर ओके सो गाइज it is not a stigma if in case you are feeling anxiety depression or anything and you are not able to connect with anyone else surrounding you you can use this number as well to share your problems with them because many times communication also act as a therapy okay so try to open up try to communicate now coming back to the news the governor of karnataka is thavar chand gelot okay baswaraj bomai is the cm and uh, the minister of health and family welfare and medical education of karnataka and the vice uh, president of nimhans is the same person that is k sudhakar okay so k sudhakar is an important in because he is the vice president of nimhans and in the presence of these two people this initiative was launched the question two is where where was the sustainable mountain development summit 9 held so it is the 9 edition of this sustainable mountain development summit it was held in le ladakh okay now guys there is nothing much to discuss in this news itself because it is a summit now the summit was attended by bhupendra yadav who is the union minister of environment uh, so he attended this uh, summit apart from this the theme is important so this summit had a theme harnessing tourism for sustainable mountain development so this year the theme focused on focus uh, on promoting the sustainable tourism so that the mountain health the mountain cleanliness and their sustainability can be uh, ensured so that's the basic theme of this uh, summit the purpose of this summit was to reduce the negative impact of tourism while harnessing its positive contributions to building climate and socio ecological resilience and sustainability so i hope that it is easy to understand from the theme itself we have understood the basic premise on which this summit was con conducted so i hope it is clear okay on that note we are talking about the mountains so there is an international mountain day as well now when do we celebrate that day don't worry i'm not going to ask this question from you because i have the answer with myself i'm going to tell you that because 
again i have seen this trend that not many of you answer in the comment section below but i hope that all of you at least search for the answers of the questions that i ask in the videos please guys don't even mention it in the comment section below but do search it because jo effort aap apne aap se daloge wo effort aapko definitely pay off karega wo aapko retain karne mein help karega now coming back to the international mountain day so it is celebrated on december 11 so after two months we are going to celebrate the international mountain day now we also have a theme of this day and the theme is women move mountain okay women move mountain this is the theme of international mountain day on that note i have one question for you this is my uh, you can say habit i cannot leave this habit i have to ask questions from you so my question from you is you have to tell me which peak is the highest in india this is your question i am going to repeat it which peak is the highest in india and there is a trick in the question find it out what is the trick find it out what is the highest peak in india okay the question number 3 is recently department for promotion of industry and internal trade hosted conference on b20 indonesia global dialogue in partnership with confederation of indian industry in new delhi the dialogue will pave the way to the b20 final summit remember i am talking about the b20 so b is business okay so the dialogue will pave the way for b20 final summit that will take place on 13 14 november 2022 at indonesia b20 is the official g20 dialogue forum with the global business community to spur economic growth and development when was this forum launched so this forum was launched in 2010 okay so let's discuss the news directly because it's a very interesting news department for promotion of industry and internal trade dpiit has organized a conference on the b20 indonesia global dialogue okay so whatever will be the conclusion whatever will be the decisions of this dialogue they will be taken forward for discussion in the final summit which will be held in the host city or you can say the president city of g20 the country indonesia okay so indonesia may the final summit of the b20 will also be held in november okay so this b20 indonesia global dialogue which was held in new delhi it was organized by dpiit in collaboration with confederation of indian industry i have already discussed this fact now the dialogues were held on five broad themes first is trade and investment energy sustainability and climate uh, digitization finance and infrastructure so these are the five themes on which uh, the dialogue uh, the discussions were held during the dialogue okay obviously you don't have to remember these uh, themes because they are not very important from your exam perspective agar aapka exam koi sa bhi abhi bhi aa raha hai in the month of october as well you don't need to remember the five themes on which the dialogue was conducted okay that is not important now business 20 so business 20 was formed in 2010 it is the official g20 dialogue for the businesses so that businesses get a platform to come together to discuss okay their issues and how can they leverage their technologies and the opportunities that they have to for economic growth to increase economic growth okay g20 is a group of 19 countries plus the european union together g20 represent 85% of the global gdp 75% of the global trade and 60% of the world's population so that's the fact about g20 now we are talking about g20 why not talk about all the groups which have a similar name for example the g7 g77 and g20 so guys i am going to discuss all these three groups in the ascending order not the ascending basically in the order of their establishment so sabse pehle establish hua tha g77 in 1964 okay then g7 in 1975 and g20 is the very latest you can say the newborn child that was established in 1999 okay so these are the three years in which these three different groupings were established okay so g20 and g7 do not have any secretariat the if uh, the official work of these groupings are done by the president country so that is all about it now one more thing that i want to tell you that currently 17th summit of the g20 is held by indonesia is organized by indonesia 18th will be organized by india next year 
the presidency of which India is going to take over in this summit in November, okay, in G20 summit in November in Indonesia. Then 19th summit of the G20 will be held in Brazil, okay, in 2024. As far as G7 is concerned, so 48th summit of G7 was held in Germany. 49th summit is going to held in is going to be hosted by Japan next year, and the 50th summit will be hosted by Italy in 2024. So these are the summits. The this information is useful for all of you. So please remember these summits and the year of formation of these groupings. Then is the World Day Against Death Penalty observed. So here October 10 is the right answer. Now on October 10, we also celebrate World Mental Health Day, the theme of which is make mental health and well-being for a global priority. Okay, it is very pertinent. I have already given a ton of, uh, you can say, lecture in the beginning itself on the importance of mental health. So pay attention to the theme. I hope that you will be able to remember the theme because mental health is very important and mental health and well-being is a global cause. So it should be given priority now. Who has won the Astana Open Tennis Tournament? So here Novak Djokovic is the right answer. So Novak Djokovic is the Serbian. He has won this uh, Astana Open 2022 Tennis Championship. Okay. So guys, Astana is the capital of Kazakhstan and I hope all of you must have heard about the changing of the capital of Kazakhstan. Earlier it was Nur Sultan, now Astana is the capital. Okay, now understand this point, we are not talking about the shifting of the places, we are just talking about the renaming of the capital. Okay, earlier initially there was Astana as, as the capital of Kazakhstan, then Astana se Nur Sultan kiya and ab Nur Sultan se wapas Astana kar diya inhone capital ka naam. Okay, so that's the trick or you can say that's the game which Kazakhstan government is playing on with its capital okay on that note can any one of you tell me can India change its capital can India shift its capital from New Delhi and if so then which are the legislations which will be changed okay for shifting the capital from New Delhi to another place okay guys questions have ended now I have special session on news bulletins so there are three very important news which i wanted to discuss with you so the very first news is modhera village in gujarat has been declared as india's first 24 7 solar powered village okay so that's the important news now on that note you are going to tell me that where is the world's largest solar park located okay this is your question modhera is famous for the sun temple which was built during the chalukya uh, tenure okay Chalukya dynasty and Prime Minister Narendra Modi had inaugurated this uh, Modhera village or you can say not inaugurated but he announced that Modhera village will be the 24 7 solar powered village now they will not buy electricity rather they will create and sell it to the national grid so Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also inaugurated various projects in Gujarat and these projects are worth 14,600 crores now is baat ko samjho ki prime minister uh, goes on a visit to various states and jab bhi wo kisi bhi state pe visit ke liye jate hain bahut sare projects ko launch karte hain and unka amount bhi bahut bada hota hai so what should you do in this situation as of now if you have any examination coming up then try to remember this amount okay at least aapko to pata hi hoga aapka kaun sa exam aa raha hai is mahine mein ya november ke mahine mein okay to agar aapka exam nearby hai then you can remember this amount otherwise you should skip this amount because by the time your examination, your RBI, SEBI and NABAD would come, this amount would have changed. I mean to say, Prime Minister or new projects launch kar denge Gujarat mein, okay? So, abhi ke liye aap isse chhod sakte hain, agar aapka koi exam nahi hai. Aur agar hai, to aapko ye yaad rakhna padega, okay? The second news is that the first batch of indigenously developed light combat helicopter named Prachand has been inducted into the Indian Air Force at its Jodhpur Air Force Station. So on that note, I remember that on October 8, we celebrate the Indian Air Force Day. And on that day, specifically, Indian Armed Forces, sorry, Indian Air Force has got a new combat uniform. Right now, I'm not able to show you the uniform, but uh, if you Google it out, you will definitely find out the new uniform if you are interested in defense. And otherwise, also, you need not to focus on the uniform itself. Okay, so I have told you about the Indian Air Force Day. Now it is your task to tell me the theme of the day this year. Coming back to the news, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited 
has uh, developed all the light combat helicopters for the Prachand unit. Okay, so I hope all of you are aware of this fact that HAL is the one which uh, manufactures all the light combat vehicles in India. Okay, helicopters particularly. So I was talking about the helicopters only. The third news is very important. It is it is going to stretch a little bit because it has really good content. So we should pay attention to the content. Okay. First of all, Kyrgyzstan has called off the military exercise named Indestructible Brotherhood 2022, which was to be held in Kyrgyzstan. Okay. So it was to be organized by the Collective Security Treaty Organization. Now, guys. If you would understand the treaty itself, which I am definitely going to talk about, you will compare this with NATO. So it is like the Central Asian NATO. Okay. Now, why am I saying that? You will understand it when I will go into the details of this organization. Now, first, let's discuss the news. So the CSTO was to conduct this exercise in Kyrgyzstan from October 10 to 14. But now the country has cancelled the exercise. Now, CSTO is a six-member security alliance. Russia, Belarus, Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, all the countries which were uh, which came out of Soviet Union are members of the CSTO. Okay. And this year, the 30th anniversary of this security treaty is being celebrated. Okay. So, it's the 30th anniversary. Now, let's discuss the facts. So, guys, in 1994, uh, the CSTO was established. The founding members of CSTO were all these Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia and Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Now Belarus has replaced Uzbekistan and all the other members remain the same. So current members are Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia and Russia, Tajikistan and Belarus. Okay, so Uzbekistan has been replaced. So this much is uh, important for you to remember. The organization has received an observer status in United Nations General Assembly in 2004. Uh, the Collective Security Council is the apex body of this organization. Now, why did I say that it is the Central Asian NATO? Because the, uh, the Asian Pacific NATO is the Quad grouping according to China. Okay, China has termed the Quad, uh, which is there in the Indo-Pacific or the Asia-Pacific region as the uh, Asian code, okay, because there India, US, Japan, and Australia are the countries which have formed that grouping. Now, why did I say that it is the Central Asian NATO? Because Article 4 of the treaty says that if any one of the state parties is subjected to aggression by any state or group of states, then this will be considered as aggression against all state parties to this treaty. So, this makes it very similar to NATO okay it can be termed as the Central Asian NATO and if you look at the treaty itself and the premise on which this organization was created then you would understand that it is primarily a security organization all the troops or the militaries of these countries have been united and they conduct the operations in unison so that's the basic idea of this uh, CSTO okay so one more thing that the article 4 itself says that if the aggression is against one state then all the states will be will treat it as the aggression aggression themselves and then they will unite their military power and then they will attack the attacker okay so that is the other implication so csto is a security alliance alliance but apart from being a security alliance it has also expanded its scope to deal with the drug smuggling illegal migration border infl infiltration and it has also you can say united its military power so they can conduct the military exercises they are also doing the disaster relief work in their member countries of course okay so that is all guys for today i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it and if there is anything you feel about the video you can mention it in the comment section below i, I meant to say about the feedbacks okay so do provide it